Hey guys, this is Caleb from the Command Valley Podcast coming at you with another Deck Tech. Here on the Command Valley Podcast, we talk about all things Commander, provide you with weekly Deck Techs to help you brew, gameplay videos, and so much more. Today, I'm going to be talking about Sir Gwen, Hero of Ashvale. But first, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to our channel, and even hit that bell so that you can see our weekly Deck Techs and be notified for our upcoming set reviews and gameplay videos. Let's dive in. Sir Gwyn, Hero of Ashvale, is 3, 1 red, 1 white, and 1 black for a 5-5 five five with Vigilance and Menace. And she says, whenever an equipped creature you control attacks, you draw a card and you lose one life. And then she also says, and this is the coolest part, equipment you control have Equip Knight 0. When I first saw Sir Gwyn, I immediately began putting together all of the great knight cards that I've had sitting around for years. I was super excited to build her because there are a lot of amazing knights throughout Magic's history, as well as some seriously powerful equipments that slot perfectly into a deck with Sir Gwyn at the helm. Sir Gwyn's last ability gives us a clear direction for the deck. Powerful knights and awesome and often overcosted equipments. Before we get into all the sweet knights and equipments, we need to talk about having some non-knight creatures in the deck. If you're going to run any creatures in this deck that are not knights, they need to have a clear purpose in the deck. And also there should probably be very few non-knight creatures in your deck. My current initial build includes six such creatures. Burnished Heart and Solemn Simulacrum are both here to help this deck ramp. Red, white, and black are not the best colors at all when it comes to ramp, so they are part of my 10 or so cards that help me ramp in the deck. You don't have to run these cards in your ramp section, however, be sure to include at least 10 cards to help you ramp in this deck so that you can get Sir Gwyn onto the field as soon as possible. Stoneforge Mystic is in this deck because if you have one or can afford one, she needs to be in this deck. At this point, everybody knows she's good, she's powerful, but she's also expensive. In short, she tutors up any equipment you want from your deck and then lets you play equipment cards for one and a white from your hand. Leonin Shikari is a super fun include that allows you to activate equip abilities at instant speed. This opens up a lot of doors when it comes to combat tricks, saving your creatures from removal with equipments that give hexproof, indestructible, or protection, and being able to hold up your mana on your opponent's turn instead of possibly wasting mana on equipping creatures on your turn. SRAM Senior Edificer draws us a card each time we play an equipment, which is always great. And Corvath Bright Flame partners with one of our awesome knights that we'll talk about a little bit later. He has flying and haste, but most importantly, gives our entire team of knights flying and haste as well. So as you can see, each of these non-knight creatures do something super specific to help move our strategy along. So make sure that any non-knights that you include in the deck are doing the same type of thing. The most appealing part of Sir Gwyn is that equipments that we might not usually play due to outrageously expensive equip costs are suddenly free to equip to knights thanks to her last ability. Cards like Colossus Hammer, Helm of the Host, and Argentum Armor are insanely powerful equipments, but also insanely expensive to equip. Colossus Hammer gives equipped creature plus 10 plus 10, and we'll talk a lot about this card a little bit later. Helm of the Host creates a non-legendary copy of whatever creature it is equipped to at the beginning of each of your combat phases, and that token gains haste. Even though it's not a knight, a great card to use this on, if you have the mana, is Stoneforge Mystic because each of her copies will let you search your library for yet another equipment card. Argentum Armor gives equipped creature plus six plus six, and whenever equipped creature attacks, destroy target permanent. Some important utility cards to help us enable our strategy are Danatha Capuchin, Pure Still Paladin, and Sigarda's Aid. Danatha has First Strike, Vigilance, and Lifelink, and she also says aura and equipment spells you cast cost one less to cast. Pure Still Paladin lets us draw a card anytime that we play an equipment, which is great because we already included a non-knight creature, SRAM, in this deck just to do that. But Pure Still Paladin is also a knight and has a metalcraft ability that says equipment you control have equip zero as long as you control three or more artifacts. So with Pure Steel Paladin, we can start equipping our creatures for free long before we even get Sir Gwyn onto the field. Sigarda's Aid lets us cast our equipments at instant speed, and whenever an equipment enters the battlefield under our control, we get to attach it to target creature we control. 
all of this is at instant speed. This is great for all the same reasons that Leon and Shikari is great, but with the added bonus of equipments attaching for free when they enter the battlefield, and we get to hold on to them for a little bit longer in our hand to throw our opponents off. Now let's talk about some more knights. This category is sort of jumbled because there's a lot of overlap, but we're going to be talking specifically about knights that really want to be equipped and knights that have and slash or give double strike. A creature with double strike will deal both first damage and normal combat damage. Double strike is already such a powerful keyword in magic and buffing double striking creatures with equipments is one of the best ways to abuse double strike but we'll get to that in just a second. First, let's talk about an absolute must have in this deck, Knight Exemplar. She is our first knight that really wants to be equipped. She is a 2-2 human knight for one and two white, and she has first strike, and then she also says other knight creatures you control get plus one, plus one, and are indestructible. Making the vast majority of our creatures indestructible at the low cost of three mana is amazing. However, Knight Exemplar does come with one big weakness. She says other knights are indestructible. She is just begging to be equipped with anything that can protect her, such as Lightning Greaves, Swiftfoot Boots, and Dark Steel Plate. Any of those equipments that can give her Hexproof or Indestructible are really great in this deck. We really, really do not want Knight Exemplar to be destroyed, so it is probably wise to wait and play her until you can absolutely for sure protect her. Another great knight to equip in this deck is Vona, Butcher of Magan. Vona is a 4-4 vampire knight for 3, 1 white and 1 black that has vigilance and lifelink and then another ability that says tap Vona, pay 7 life, destroy target non-land permanent, activate this ability only during your turn. The reason I wanted to bring up equipping Vona is because he has lifelink. Buffing any knight with lifelink to gain as much life as possible whenever it does damage works great with our commander's ability that, yes, forces us to draw a card and lose a life whenever an equipped creature we control attacks. The one time I played Sir Gwyn as a brawl deck, I lost because I was down to exactly one life and I couldn't swing with enough damage without swinging with an equipped creature, which would have killed me before damage was even dealt because I had Sir Gwyn on board. So whatever you do, don't underestimate gaining life in this deck, and any knight that has lifelink fits perfectly into this category. Moving on to an absolute monster in this deck, we've got Phyrexian Crusader. Phyrexian Crusader is a zombie knight, he's a 2-2, he costs one and two black, and he has first strike, protection from red, and from white. And that's not it, he's also got Infect. Remember that Colossus Hammer we were talking about earlier? This guy is absolutely the most deserving knight in the entire deck to wield that hammer. There are plenty of ways in this deck that you can one-shot someone out of nowhere by hitting them with 10 or more poison counters from this guy. And just a quick side tangent, speaking of killing people with Infect, one card that I've absolutely loved and have only recently decided to add to every single one of my black decks is Tainted Strike. Tainted Strike is an instant for one black that says target creature gets plus one plus O oh, and gains Infect until end of turn. It is really not hard to get a four power double striking creature past blockers with this deck and you can make someone really regret thinking that they could take 8 damage when instead they die out of nowhere from your creature dealing 10 infect damage. The best part about playing this card is that you don't even have to use one of your own creatures. You can use it on another player's huge creature. You can even use it as removal for indestructible creatures. This is a great card, trust me, run it, if you're playing black you want this card. These next knights all have and or give our knights double strike. We've already talked about how powerful double strike and equipments can be, so I will just list most of these off without going into too much depth. We have Corvath's other half, Sylvia Brightspear. The one thing that I will say about her is that she's not bad on her own, but she also searches up a dragon that will give the rest of our team flying in haste, which is pretty sweet. Next we have Balin, Wandering Knight. Balin is a 3-3 cat knight for 2 and 2 white, and he has first strike, and he also says that he has double strike as long as 2 or more equipments are attached to him. 
and then you can pay one and a white to attach all equipments that you control to him. This guy is super powerful. We've already talked about being able to equip our knights at instant speed and that some of the best and tricky things that we can do in this deck are equipping our equipments out of nowhere. Next we've got Silverblade Paladin that can soul bond with another creature. Soul bond is you may pair this creature with another unpaired creature when either enters the battlefield. They remain paired for as long as you control both of them. As long as Silverblade Paladin is paired with another creature, both creatures have double strike. So this is a great way to give not only Silverblade Paladin double strike, but also another one of our most powerful knights. For example, the Phyrexian Crusader. And then we've got Mirren Crusader that already has double strike built in, as well as protection from two of the three most played colors in EDH, black and green. Kinsbale Cavalier on its face doesn't look like a whole lot for just being a 2-2 for four, but he gives our entire team of knights double strike. And just like with Knight Exemplar, we really wanna protect this guy if we can get him onto the field. And last but not least, we have Valiant Knight. Valiant Knight gives all of our other knights plus one plus one and for three and two white we can give our whole team double strike until end of turn. I'm not sure which one I like best out of these last two though I am leaning a little bit more towards Cavalier and I kind of feel like I'm beating a dead horse at this point but giving our whole team double strike is just absolutely absurd. Valiant Knight and Kinsbale Cavalier are two of the most powerful creatures in this deck by far. Finally, here are some quick extras for you. Some cards that I really wanted to mention that I'm excited to run in this deck are Urza's Incubator, Steel Shaper's Gift, and Righteous Confluence. These are all really powerful cards in their own way that you could easily skip over. I love how much quicker Urza's Incubator can make this deck and the flexibility on Righteous Confluence makes it really useful in Sir Gwyn. Urza's Incubator is an artifact for three that says when it enters the battlefield, choose a creature type. So obviously we're going to choose knights in this deck. And then knight spells are going to cost two less to cast. Righteous Confluence is a sorcery for three and two white that says choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. And then the three modes are put a 2-2 white knight creature token with vigilance onto the battlefield, exile target enchantment, or you gain five life. The two modes that I'm most likely to choose with this deck are getting the token or gaining the five life. But like I said, you could choose one of them three times. So getting three two two white knights for five is awesome or gaining 15 life when we're super low and still wanna be drawing cards is also really good. And then Steel Shaper's Gift is just a given. It's a tutor for an equipment that puts it directly into our hand. Lastly, I can't make this video without talking about the swords of X and Y. They are all really powerful, some more than others, and if you have them and you want to run them in this deck, then by all means run them. But if you're like me and you have the best ones in your cube or other decks and you don't want to buy more and you're also too lazy to switch them out back and forth between decks and the cube, etc., then don't worry, it's not a big deal. These are not needed for the deck. I am not running any of them in this initial build for multiple reasons, but they will probably eventually make their way in. All right, thank you for watching until the end of the video. Sir Gwen and her army of knights is sure to make for some interesting out of nowhere plays. Be sure to comment below and tell us if there's anything that we missed, if you have any questions, and what other commanders you'd be interested in us doing videos for. Be sure to like this video, subscribe to our channel, and hit that bell so that you are notified about our weekly deck techs, our upcoming set reviews, and our monthly gameplay videos. Also, don't forget to check out our other deck techs and the full list for this deck in the show notes. Thanks guys, girls, and goats.